Mila Mulroney is in her second year at 24 Sussex Drive, which, in case you didn't know it, is a somewhat lavish house with a swimming pool put in by the Liberals, where the Prime Minister and his wife and family live. Is it a tough life at 24 Sussex Drive with all those sparkling dinner parties each and every night and a very hectic, heavy social life? It's a very nice life, yes, it's very nice, but it's not all as, uh, as you say it is. Tell me this, what are we going to talk about this morning? I mean, I, am I, you know, a 67-year-old chauvinist sexist, am I going to sit and attempt to talk politics seriously with the Prime Minister's wife? I don't know, are you? Well, I sometimes find it difficult to get the Prime Minister to come. Well, I'm sure if you invite him, he'd come. Well, we've had he, little... He's enjoyed your company many a time, hasn't yeah, he? A couple of times he's dodged it too, but that's <laughs> another story. All right. Campaign for the budget. I think, personally, the budget is a disaster. Didn't go far enough if I'm a conservative and it went too far if I'm a liberal. Now, you tell me why I should love this budget. Well, I think you should wait and see, first of all. I don't think you should love it or hate it until you see what, what happens. I think it's too early to tell. The dollar keeps slipping. Well, but it'll come back. The price of oil keeps slipping. Talk to Pat Carney about that. She's one of your local... Uh, residents and she's uh, quite an adamant person. I think she's going in the right direction. All right now, uh, actually you've been busy. Do you spend your time doing do good things or do you do serious stuff? I think do good things are serious things. All right, give me your favorite do good thing. Well, I think raising eight million dollars to fight cystic fibrosis is a very do good thing, but I think it's a very valuable thing. I think if you take People have been screaming to get bureaucracy off their backs. I think if we as individuals and volunteers try and raise eight million dollars personally, um, I think we're, A, helping reduce government expenditures and, B, putting it where it's important. I consider my nose taken off on that. Of course it's a good mm -hmm. thing, but how much of the $8 million have you raised? I think we're halfway there. Now, what about drugs? I see you were down at the First Lady's Conference in Washington some time ago. Mm -hmm. Did that do any good? I think it uh, opened up uh, certainly some eyes. I think uh, we've started a program here called Pride which is, as a matter of fact, it started out in Saskatoon, and it's, uh, it's a parental group. Uh, what we got out of that conference was that um, uh, parents can do the most where children are concerned vis-a-vis uh, -vis drugs, and that groups, when Nancy Reagan took over the project, there were 1,000 parental groups in the United States. There are now nine after four and a half years. And I think it's very important that... Uh, that parents know that it's working in the United States, that in, that in Canada as well it can work. You know, this is a, a city particularly, and the province which has been, you know, covered with drugs for all the time I've been here, certainly since the middle 50s. Mm. Nobody seems to come up with a firm opinion, and this is one of our biggest black market cash crops in mm. British Columbia. Mm. You know, we grow very good pot here, it would mm. seem. What should we do? Well, I mean, people smoke, people drink, why not legalize marijuana? Well, because uh, why not legalize it? Because um, every, every indication is that anyone who starts with marijuana ends up, well, no one who is who's taking cocaine has not had marijuana. Marijuana is the beginning um, of potential uh, use of harder drugs. And uh, through education, which we start in our, through Jake Epps programs, in early uh, elementary school, where we teach good self-esteem and um, to stand up to peer pressure, uh, we've been able to do uh, very, uh, very good work. And in turn, in turn, we have, we have decreased the use of marijuana. Unfortunately, we do have a problem with cocaine. It's a hell of a problem yeah. with cocaine. Now, I don't know what you do about it. Just the other day, there was another Supreme Court decision under the Charter of Rights, which is going to make it much more difficult to throw the book at big-time drug traffickers. That's where they reverse the button of proof. Mm. And that's going to make life more difficult to put them away. But sometimes when you look at the state of affairs in any m m metropolitan ca part of Canada, you think, maybe you should just legalize it and keep it away from the youngsters. No, I, I couldn't disagree more. You're totally against I'm that to kind of to thing. To to totally against it. But legalizing. The, the youngsters will say to you as they say to me, well, you've got your booze. Marijuana is less damaging than well, booze. Well, we talked about booze at this conference, too. It's just as bad. It's just as bad. In every which way. Any, any kind of excess is bad. Did you ever smoke? Never. You're just lucky. You realize that. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Brian think so. used to smoke quite a lot. 
Oh, you're talking cigarettes. Oh, no. I, um, I, 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 I did. You think I would ask you if you smoked uh, marijuana? Absolutely. No, I would I wouldn't. know the questions you ask. All right. Uh, you, um, you've never smoked marijuana. You did get a uh, nose full of it at some rock concert once, didn't you? I did. I did. And it was the most horrendous feeling. Secondhand smoke. Oh, it was terrible. Second. Oh. I, couldn't, I couldn't feel the sidewalk when I walked home. Secondhand pot. <laughs> My microphone's falling off. But you never smoked cigarettes. I did. I did. I have to confess. I stopped when I was uh, pregnant for my third child. You smoked until you were I pregnant did. for your third child? Yes. How old I wasn't a big smoker, though. You mean the odd one? Uh, never, never more than a pack, but still quite a bit. Brian was a big smoker. Yes, he was. Tell me, it's just, does he still sneak one in the downstairs bathroom no. occasionally at 24 hours and try No. Can no. you guarantee that? Yes. Mm. Well, what do you, how do you keep your, how heavy are you? How much do I weigh? Yeah. 139 pounds. How tall are you? Five feet, nine and a half. You know, maybe five pounds overweight. Wonder how old I am? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 32. Are you five pounds <laughs> overweight? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I was thinking that myself when you came in this morning. Jack, you never change. I have been, you won the Chatelaine Woman of the Year Award, did you not? Yes. Did you like the letters they wrote about you in Chatelaine? I, I don't mind letters that are uh, contradictory or critical. Are you unflappable? No, I, I'm flappable. This woman has taken over a suite of four rooms in the government building, acquired three aides, spending 100000 a year of taxpayers' money on the flimsy excuse that she receives as many as 100 letters a week, asking her help on matters stuck in the bureaucratic process. It would be cheaper to prod the bureaucrats into action. That woman's criticizing you for the unnecessary expenditure of public money. What's the question? Do you, is there any truth in what she says? Well, the truth is that there has been no taxpayers' dollars put into my office. All my staff, as all previous wives, are under the PMO umbrella. They've all been accounted for. Um, I'm not leasing any space. I got one large room that we subdivided, and the letters have gone up to 300 now a week. And they're, they're not just fan letters. And there's a lot letters. of other, and they're certainly not just fan letters. They're very valid letters from special interest groups, such as the uh, disabled, uh, and we have ethnocultural groups writing to me. We have uh, school children. We have, uh, and 300 letters a week is a lot to handle, not to mention speaking engagements and uh, social things and... It's not a pretend career as the Prime Minister's wife. I don't think it's a pretend career, and I'd like to, uh, to uh, make it very clear that uh, it's a full-time job and it's a lot of hard work, and I think in many ways um, it, the career has been unfolding quite, quite quickly. How does, uh, I, I can see that. I mean, you're a necessary part of the establishment, and you're, one of our, you're our number two hostess in the country, aren't you? Are you? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about hostessing. You know, I think one of the things that we've tried very much... Is that not part of your job? It's... I, I, think, I think it's a part of the job, but I don't think we've done as much entertaining as people think we have. I think certainly there's a lot of uh, government, um, functions. government functions that we've been doing. But, uh, you know, we've been trying to, um, to be fiscally responsible in Ottawa, and I think that's the kind of thing, message that we've come across with. We haven't had the kind of, as a matter of fact, we got quite a bit of criticism that in our first year we didn't entertain enough. But um, I think that's the direction we should go. I mean, where else are you going to have a prime minister that in two years has taken $22,000 off his salary? I mean, I think, you know, there's an indication. Uh, how much did he suffer during all the unfortunate incidents early in the government's career? Did, does Brian show a lot of strain? I don't think he shows a lot of strain, but it's, it, it was a concern to him. I don't think it was a pleasant time for us. I, I, would no. have, I would have liked to have cut out September. But you're over the hump now, over the hill. I hope so. And I on the so. smooth road to continued political success. Well, I hope so. I hope we're doing the right thing. Look, something I've got to ask you, because somebody will ask on the phones if I don't ask you. What? That, uh, that <laughs> caper about the saluting, tell me the score on that. You were accused of demanding that the Mounties salute you. Was well, that I, no, a, I never did. A lot of nonsense. It was a lot of nonsense. Well, that was a uh, Hoy and Doug Fisher. Mm, wasn't Doug Fisher? No, Fisher came to your defence, and he and Hoy defense. almost did a punch up in the gallery. Well, I heard that third hand, so I'm not quite sure exactly what happened. But I, I, I didn't. I'm certainly, uh, 
I'm certainly not one to ask uh, things like that. And I, I quite, I quite understand that comment where Brian said Mila's from Eastern Europe and she salutes people. And you know, Eastern Europeans found that very valid, yeah. very valid. It was not, uh, it was not as flippant as people thought. Yeah, because yes. of the ever-present fear of absolutely, arbitrary, arrogant absolutely, and we are police authority. We know very much the important role that the Mounties play. Well, I'm going to go to the phones now. Okay. So you're not talking to me. You're talking to Mila Mulroney. And may they call you Mila? Absolutely. Yes, of she's Mila to you and she's Mila to me. Go ahead, please. You never know what's going to happen here, mind you. Go oh, ahead, okay. please. Yes, Mila. You just go to it. I think you're fantastic. Don't let Jack give you any flack. <laughs> you're a model for every woman in Canada. And Thank I support you. you all the way. Thank you. Thank you. How old is Nicholas now? Six months today. That's four. That's four. Names again, please. Caroline, Benedict, Mark, and Nicholas. You call him Benny? No, I call him Ben. You call him Ben, that's better. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mila, um, I have a suggestion for uh, restoring self-esteem uh, in Canada as far as uh, uh, drug problems and what have you go. Why, no, you know, why not uh, uh, have a government that at least has uh, some kind of a plan instead of jumping around from year to year? People need jobs. Uh, to feel self-esteem and to feel that they're uh, putting back into society what they're getting in welfare and UI benefits and every other thing. People don't want those kinds of things. They want jobs. Uh, they don't want people going, you know, uh, these volunteer organizations just take a little bit more heat off the government for now because of their careless spending. And they have no plan. They just go from year to year. Okay, bye. That's a good comment. Mm -hmm. Jobs is the big thing out Absolutely. here, of course. Because you see, I always tell people from Central Canada and Eastern Canada, there's only 6% unemployment in Ontario. And I don't think they realize that people in Ontario, how tough we are having out, out here. Well, that's what the government, all the government's been talking about is jobs. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, I'd just like to say that uh, uh, wouldn't it be a good idea to, instead of legalize marijuana, maybe make it available in the liquor stores and then, therefore, they could tax it and get the drug problem off the streets? And uh, you know, enforce then they would be able to enforce a little more control on it. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm very leery of anything that puts uh, easy accessibility of, of drugs into the hands of perhaps children or uh, people who really don't know better. Yeah. Uh, on the deadly serious side, I noticed that you, Mila, and Jill Turner, Bro Lucille Broadbent, and Maureen are doing something about sexual abuse. What is that you're doing? Well, it's the Abadji Report. We're, what we've done is uh, we've encouraged and trying to support uh, uh, the cause against uh, child abuse. It's, uh, it's a terrible, uh, silent um, crime that's, that's being perpetrated on many Canadian children. And so we're just trying to bring interest. I understand you've got 100 MPs and senators. And have you spoken to the Prime Minister about it? Well, they, uh, our group met the Prime Minister last week, and I think it's, uh, it's going to be in the next few weeks some action will be taken. Good. Well, there's much greater awareness of the problem now than there ever was before, I think, yes. out here on the West Coast, but not enough kind of uh, corrective action seems to be able to be taken at the moment. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Webster. I would like to, first of all, congratulate Myla on her attitudes towards children and family life. And I would like to ask her, in light of the Conservative Task Force looking into daycare, uh, what we as voters can do to encourage our individual MPs to get behind this and take some action. Well, first of all, you said the right word. You have to encourage your MPs. They have to be very vocal about it. It's, uh, this government's a government that listens. It consults. And I think um, when, the, uh, when there's a strong voice, and strong voices uh, sent to Ottawa. It's just a matter of time before action is implemented. Mm -hmm. Go ahead from Campbell River, please. Hi. Hello. Hi, Mila. Uh, I'm calling more or less just to find out a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, uh, your education background, and um, mm -hmm. how you personally feel about being the First Lady in Canada. Well, I, was, um, I came to Canada when I was uh, five years old from Yugoslavia. My father was on what I call his third career. He's a lawyer, and he did medicine in Yugoslavia, and then he came and did his medicine again in uh, studies in Canada. I grew up in, um, in um, what I would call lower middle class in, um, in Montreal. I went to some very good schools. My father felt that education, my family felt that education was the way to, uh, to a su successful future. 
Um, what was your last question? How does it really feel to be the wife of the Prime Minister at your age and your time? I think this is going to be the most... Uh, this is, I think of this as a, a fabulous time in my life, and I'm going to enjoy every bit of it and uh, learn from it. And um, I'm, I'm just loving every minute. Good. Go ahead from Kelowna. Yes, uh, most of the problems we have with marijuana stems from alcohol. Most people that uh, take alcohol uh, end up uh, getting killed. They're child abuse. They're any family situation. <coughs> is usually to do yeah. with alcohol. I don't know why you blame all the heavy drugs. <coughs> well, I used to blame it in my younger days when we had a criminal drug population in Vancouver on the old heroin that would choke a horse, but I don't follow your logic. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. Morning. Good morning, Mila. Good morning. <coughs> You're a very lovely-looking lady. I've got two questions for you. Where did you get the word hawk? Yeah, I was going to ask that. Uh, did... The second one is, your, as I say, you're very pretty. Why don't you cut your bangs? <coughs> Oh, they are cut. I cut them this week oh, to come to BC. Oh, I'm sorry. How's that? Is that better? Um, I got the word "oh" probably from uh, from uh, some of my friends that that influenced me a little bit, and they uh, and we're we're very emotional, demonstrative family, and so I think that probably that <coughs> all kinds of funny sayings come out from our mouths. "Oh" is generally speaking Scotch or Irish. Well, maybe maybe Och. that's it. Good. Then I wanted to ask you that myself. Go ahead, please. I've been learning some language or other. I've lost my notes. Dobro jutro. Dobro jutro. Good morning. How's, that's good morning and what? Serbo-Croatian. <laughs> I'm glad I know what language <laughs> it is. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mila. Good morning. I only hope uh, that the public who spend time criticizing you realize the pressures you work and live under and that they, too, are willing or are giving their time and money to similar volunteer organizations, anything that needs volunteer time or money, and that they're not criticizing you unless they too are giving this time and working and living under the same pressures that you are. They may be different pressures, but nevertheless pressures. And uh, I really congratulate you on your work. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning, Jack. Good morning. Good morning, Mila. Good morning. Uh, I just have a, what I figure is a foolproof method of getting people off welfare, and I was wondering if you could pass it along to the Prime Minister. Pass it along. Well. we'll all be fascinated yes. if you can give us the answer. Okay, well, the way I see it, what you do is uh, you take uh, your welfare recipient and uh, you, cut a, you cut his uh, his welfare, which is already happening, and then you slowly implement uh, a training program uh, to get him back to work. And as he makes more money in the training program and eventually full-time work, you gradually ease him off welfare. You're saying assistance through the retraining program. That already is in that, some government schemes. That's it. We've, uh, there's a, uh, there's a quite a bit of retraining going on, including, including uh, re-establishing for senior citizens. But, yeah, I mean, we have a real problem yes. in this province at the moment, as you know. Last call. Go ahead, please. Hello. Um, the reason I'm calling, hello, Mila. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I was uh, just wondering um, how you felt about the comment that um, Prime Minister Mulroney made on Good Morning America a few weeks back about, uh, you know, how the Americans don't really pay that much attention to Canadians and that. I do agree, but I just wondered, um, he's so diplomatic, I was surprised. I wondered um, what your feelings were and just... Well, well when, when my husband, um, when Brian addressed the uh, international publishers, um, in in uh, Montreal several months ago or men, men, a year ago, he uh, he mentioned to them that he was quite disillusioned that, for example, Time Magazine and and the um, the papers and the magazines that are um, put into the hands of the United States uh, citizens are unfortunately not very well informed on Canadians. We in Canada know so much about the United States and they don't know very much about us. So I think that uh, there is a lot of truth to that, and we hope to, uh, to open up the awareness, certainly. There was a classic mistake in the New York Times the other day when they had $229 billion down as our deficit, and when in fact that was our debt. That's it. Our deficit That's being 29.8 projected in That's the new it. budget. Plans for today? Are you doing some more cystic fibrosis stuff today? When do you go back I'm to going Ottawa? To, I'm going to um, Victoria, and then I'm going to Nanaimo, and tonight I fly to Calgary. Go to Red Deer, Saskatoon, Edmonton. And back to Ottawa. And Winnipeg. 
and, and back to Ottawa. Ottawa. My thanks to Mila Mulroney, the wife of Prime Minister Brian Mulroney of Canada. You've been a delightful, charming, and forthright guest.